this is an echocardiogram from the subcostal view. You can see the liver shadow here and this is the border of the diaphragm and uh, the cardiac chambers seen here are right ventricle and left ventricle not very clearly seen in this still image. You can see the left atrium, right atrium and part of the interatrial septum. In this view, the ultrasound beam from the transducer located above is coming perpendicular to the interatrial septum and it is parallel to the Doppler signals. For a good visualization, in Doppler you need uh, the beam to be parallel and in uh, 2D echo you need the beam to be perpendicular. So in this view both are ideal. If you see an echo dropout in the interatrial septum in the apical four chamber view that may be a false dropout. But if you see a dropout in subcostal view that will be a true dropout. So we have a defect in the interatrial septum and we can also see a red color flow here. The color flow is going from the left atrium to the right atrium because the transducer is located in this place and uh, when the flow is going in that direction it will be coded red. A reverse flow will be coded blue in this view. So this is a left to right shunt and ideally it should not be called a PFO flow because PFO by definition is a valvular opening which will shunt only right to left. But PFO can shunt left to right when it is stretched open. If the left atrial or right atrial pressures are higher, the PFO can be stretched open and then there could be different shunt. Suppose the left atrial pressure is higher and the PFO is stretched open, then you can have a left to right shunt across the PFO. Otherwise, PFO shunts only during certain phases of respiration or cardiac cycle or with Valsalva manure. That's why we may use these manures to make out shunts. It is especially done when instead of color Doppler you use saline contrast echocardiography.